This Bible study is going to be called The Mystery of the Samaritans. The Mystery of the Samaritans. I usually close out a Bible study with this verse, but I'm going to start this Bible study with this verse. Let's go to John chapter 8 and verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now the Pharisees are a denomination of the Jews. Verse 13. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, the Pharisees, these Pharisee Jews are speaking to Jesus. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh. I judge no man. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, you sh ye should have known my father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Wow, that's a pretty harsh word. I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. And, oh, by the way, I am reading from the King James Bible, and if you read in the Jewish books, the commentaries, the Jewish commentaries, they consider this the most anti-Semitic chapter in the entire Bible. But what can I tell you? This is the words of Christ is recorded in the King James Bible. All right, let's go to verse 22. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Words of Christ in red, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So if anybody tells you that Jews, Jews get saved without Jesus, well, they're calling Jesus here a liar. Verse 25. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say, I have many things to say, and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he. 
and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. So, you know, there is some Jews that believed on Jesus. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, now, of course, these are the unbelieving Jews. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Well, that's funny. I thought Israel was in bondage in Egypt. And they say they were never in bondage to any man. Hmm. Who are these people? Don't they, know their, don't they know the history? Verse 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth, committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth, abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abideth ever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free Indeed, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Oh, Jesus is getting pretty nasty to these people, huh? Verse 39, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham, ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication, we have one Father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and come from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? even because ye cannot hear my word. Listen carefully. Words of Christ in red, King James Bible, Jesus speaking to these unbelieving Jews. Ye are of your father, the devil. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Ooh, who was the murderer from the beginning? Cain, wasn't he? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Oh yeah, Satan doesn't abode in the truth. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar. And the father of it, and the father of it, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. That is some pretty harsh words. Jesus said they were of their father, the devil, the unbelieving Jews. 
verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Huh. The Jews said, Say we not well that thou art a, a Samaritan and hast a devil? So here it is. The Jews are answering Jesus, and they're saying he's a Samaritan. And they say he's he has a devil. He's demon-possessed. He's devil-possessed. Why is that significant? You know, I mean, I understand them saying that, he, you know, he's he has a devil. But why are they calling him a Samaritan? What's up with that? Well, we're going to find out by the time we're done with this study. Verse 49, Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me, and I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou art a that thou hast a devil. Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste a death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thy, thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. But ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Why is that significant? I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. I'd like to know how Jesus did that stuff. I really would. I mean, when you, the midst means he went through the middle of them. He went through the middle of them, but he hid himself and went out of the temple. I mean, you know, they're getting ready to kill this, kill Jesus, and I, I can't figure it out. But but why is what he's saying, I am? Why is that why is that significant? Let's see. All right, well, let's go to Exodus chapter three. I guess we'll start in verse one. We're gonna skip around real quick. I don't want to make this a big study of I am. Uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. The burning bush. You Hopefully, hopefully you people have heard this story before. If you haven't, you need to read the Old Testament. Uh, so, so, all right, so um, when you keep reading, you know, the bushes, uh, let's see, all right, uh, verse three, we'll just go ahead and read it. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid 
to look upon God. You know, here's an interesting thing. In verse 2 it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. And yet, we just read that he said, you know, it sounds like it's the angel of the Lord that's saying, Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. A lot of Bible scholars will tell you that they believe that this particular angel of the Lord is Christ in his pre-human form upon the earth. You know, basically the word angel means messenger. But sadly, some people get suckered into the um, Jehovah's Witness watchtower lies and they'll try to make you think, oh, this is Michael the Archangel, and, you know, don't believe that junk. <clears throat> Verse 7, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them out of the land unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Now come therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my children, my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. All right. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. I did a study on the mountains. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I am come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? You know, that's that's not an uncommon request. You know, somebody comes and says, Oh, um, God sent me. Okay. Uh, well, what's his name? To a Muslim, uh, his name is Allah. To a, um, to a Hindu, his name could be Brahma or Shiva or Vishnu or Hare Krishna or hundreds of thousands of other gods. Um, you know, to a Satanist, why, it's Lucifer or Satan. That's the name of their god. So when the children of Israel are go, you know, they ask Moses, well, um, what's his name? So, behold, when I am come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? What shall I say unto them? Yeah, what am I going to tell them? Verse 14, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. I am hath sent me unto you. Now, don't think for a minute that the Jews do not understand when Jesus said, I am, that he is directly telling them a reference to this very thing. Okay? I mean, let's face it. Uh, and John... In John 8, verse 58, Jesus said unto them, he's speaking to the Jews, 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Now he's telling them, I am. That's some heavy-duty stuff there, people. All right, here's an interesting verse. Mark chapter 14 and verse 60. Mark 14, 60. And the high priest. Uh, this is the uh, Jewish trial of Jesus. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and saith, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. So, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. All right, well, let's take a look in Luke chapter 17 and verse 11. And it came to pass as he, Jesus, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Now, a Samaritan is a resident of Samaria. Makes sense, right? I mean, a Texan is a resident of Texas. And a New Yorker is a resident of New York. And a Floridian is a resident of Florida. And a Samaritan is a resident of Samaria. So Jesus went through the midst or the middle of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. They had leprosy. Leprosy is a horrible disease. It turns your skin uh, like paper white, and it rots your skin off. People that have leprosy, their fingers and their toes just basically fall off their body. I mean, it's a horrible disease. And uh, if you had leprosy, they uh, quarantined you. They kicked you out of the, the camp. But what you would do is if you believed that you were cured, you would go to the priest. The priest would examine your body thoroughly and pronounce that you were clean and then I'll let you back into the, uh, the camp or the city. All right. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. You know, they're in quarantine. They don't, you know, they're not allowed to be with everybody. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go. Show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that, as they went, they were cleansed. So here it is, they're healed from their leprosy, right? Verse 15, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So here it is. You got a Samaritan. Well, remember the Jews accused Jesus of being a Samaritan and, and having a devil? Right? Oh, you're a Samaritan and, and you're demon possessed. But here it is. A Samaritan had leprosy. Jesus had healed him. He comes down, falls down on his face at Jesus' feet giving him thanks, and he's a Samaritan. Verse 17, And Jesus answering said, 
Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Isn't that funny? There were ten of them, and only one of them returned to give thanks to Jesus. The tenth is the tithe, right? Many are called, but few are chosen. You ever hear that? And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. God called the Samaritan, Jesus called the Samaritan a stranger. And he said, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Hmm. So who are these Samaritans? All right, turn to Luke chapter 10 and verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, when you think of a lawyer, uh, the lawyer, a lawyer back in the old times was somebody that specialized in the law of God as numbered uh, as numbered in scripture in the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus I mean you're talking somebody that is has got a doctorate degree in the Torah this is somebody that knows Bible law he knows the Old Testament inside and out okay that's a lawyer not not the shysters we have today matter of fact um, there was a woman that was married to a lawyer and uh, she went to the uh, he died so she, you know she went to the, the funeral home and she says well I want to get, get get a gravestone for my husband for his burial um, at, at the gravesite and the uh, the funeral director says well Okay, uh, what would you like on the, uh, the tombstone? And the woman says, Here lies a lawyer and an honest man. And the wife said, Yep, that's what I want. Here lies a lawyer and an honest man. And the funeral director said, Oh, no, ma'am, we, we cannot put that on the tombstone. And the woman says, Why not? He says, the funeral director says, uh, ma'am, we can't bury two people in the same grave. Sorry. All right. So. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he, Jesus, he said unto him, what is written in the law? What readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. That's based, that is what, that Jesus summed that up. You know, Jesus had said that same thing. And he said unto him, Jesus speaking, and he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, that's his clothes, and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So here it is, a priest of God is walking by. He sees the guy laying in the street. And instead of helping him, he crosses to the other side of the road. 
oh, I don't want to be defiled by that, that thing laying in the road, right? Verse 32, and likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, ooh, this is one of those dogs that the Jews say they, you know, the Jews say the Samaritans are dogs. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. That's very prophetic. Wine is, uh, Jesus compared wine to his blood at the Last Supper. Oil is oftentimes compared to the Holy Spirit. And when you would pour strong wine on somebody's wound, well, it's got alcohol in it. It would uh, help kill germs that would cause an infection, right? But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. So here it is, the Levites and the priests could care less about this poor wounded guy, but a Samaritan that the, the Jews consider to be dogs had compassion on him. Verse 3, um, all right. Verse 34, And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now which of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, this is the lawyer, and he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. So who are these Samaritans? Well, let's read about the uh, woman at the well. Now, here's an important thing that I'm going to read before we read about the, uh, the woman at the well. Something that most people miss. In Matthew 1 and verse 2, Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. And then in Acts 7 and verse 8, And he gave them the covenant of circumcision, and so Abraham begat Isaac, and circumcised him the eighth day, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. Jacob had his name changed by God himself, to Israel. And the 12 patriarchs were the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? So let's take a look at the Abrahamic covenant confirmed in Isaac and confirmed in Jacob, who became Isaac. And this is imperative to understand the woman at the well, believe it or not. So let's take a look. I know a lot of times I cover the same material, but I try to put a little different twist on it. And sometimes you need to hear something two, three, four times before it finally sinks in. But if you ask me, if you want to really understand the Bible, you have to have a good working knowledge of the book of Genesis. After all, it's the beginning. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, so here it is, Abram's 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant, which is like a contract, okay, 
A covenant's a promise. Okay? And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, uh, Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. So God changed Abram's name to Abraham, and he said he was going to be a father of many nations. Verse 6, And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings, kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed, or children, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. How long is an everlasting covenant? Uh, forever. If it lasts, if it's everlasting, that means forever. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. So, And then Abraham had two sons and Isaac was to be the chosen seed. Now Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. And Abraham's wife, Sarah, said she wanted Ishmael and her, uh, his mother cast out. You know, because she had a son. So, Genesis chapter 21 and verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken, or listen, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So, but if you keep reading, you'll see that God blessed Ishmael. And for those of you that don't know it, many of the Arabs claim descent from it, uh, Abraham. Matter of fact, Muhammad claimed descent from Abraham, uh, from Ishmael. And it wouldn't surprise me if it's true. But Ishmael was not to be the promised seed. Isaac was. It said, For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Don't, don't believe me? Go to Genesis chapter 17 and verse 19. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, God named Abraham's son. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. So God's going to establish his covenant with an everlasting covenant with Isaac. Verse 20, and as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he begat. See, Ishmael had twelve princes too, the twelve tribes of Ishmael, but not exactly, you know. Uh, let's see. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac. So, God blessed Ishmael for Abraham's sake, but he was not to be the promised seed. Ish Isaac was to be the promised seed. Okay? And then Isaac had two sons, Esau 
and Jacob. This is the, this is where it becomes important. Now in Genesis 32 verse 9, and Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which saidest unto me, return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. So Jacob had Isaac for a father and Abraham as a grandfather. Okay, very important. All right, so here it is. Just remember, God made a, an everlasting covenant with Abraham. God made an everlasting covenant with Isaac. And Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. Now turn to Genesis chapter 35 and verse 9. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name is shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. So remember that Jacob had his name changed to Israel by God himself. And Jacob had 12 sons, which became the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, verse 11, And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee will I give it. And to thy seed, or children, and to thy seed after thee, will I give the land. Okay? Now, let's keep that in mind. Jacob became Israel, who had 12 sons, that became the 12 tribes of Israel. Because if you don't understand that, the woman at the well would make no sense at all. Well, a little bit. All right, let's go check out the woman at the well. All right, let's go to chapter 4 of the book of John and verse 1. I read this in a previous study, but you know what? Who are the Samaritans? Who are these people? I mean, the Jews accused Jesus of being a Samaritan and being demon-possessed. Who are these people? When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees, these are the a denomination of Jews, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and parted again unto Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Ah. So Samaria is in the land of Israel. Ah, it's near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. You remember Joseph, the story of Joseph in Egypt uh, with under Pharaoh? And, and, you know, yeah, Joseph was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. So, so you got to realize Samaria, 
Sychar is near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, Jacob's well was there. Evidently, jo Jacob had had a well dug, or he dug it himself, maybe, I don't know. But it was Jacob's well. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. So here it is. This is Jacob's well. Jacob Israel, this is his well. I know, I'm making a big deal out of it, but you'll come to understand when I get there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. All right. So here it is, one of those Samaritan dogs, a woman. Well, that's what the Jews call them. Then there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him. All right, so here it is. This woman of Samaria is coming to the well of Jacob, who was Israel, to draw water. Jesus is sitting there, and he asks her, Give me to drink. Okay? Verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. You know, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask anything of me, a Samaritan? You know, you Jews think that we're Samaritans, we're a bunch of dogs. You know, why are you asking me? You know, the Jews don't have any, they don't, they don't even talk to us. They don't like us. They don't have any dealings with us. They stay away from us. You know, how is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Do you know that this woman is considered a Gentile? And Jesus, of course, he's the, the high priest. He's the king of kings, lord of lords. He's a lion of the tribe of Judah, which slang is Jew. I mean, this is this woman, in a way, is a shadow, a representation of the Gentile bride of Christ. Think about it. You know, the Jews didn't have any dealings with these people. If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee, Living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hath thou that living water? Listen carefully. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? What? This woman, this Gentile Samaritan woman, just asked Jesus, Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Jacob was the father of the twelve tribes of Israel, and the Samaritan Gentile woman just called Jacob her father. Did you catch that? Art thou greater than 
our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank, drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? What did Jesus say? Oh, no, Samaritan woman. You're not of Jacob. You're not of Israel. Uh-uh. No way. You're a Gentile woman. Did he say that? No. Verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. You see, this Samaritan woman, this Gentile, she said, our father Jacob. She was an Israelite. Think about it. There's no other explanation. Jesus didn't correct her and say, oh, no, you're not an Israelite. You're not of Jacob. And here it is. He's offering her living water of eternal life. Isn't that wild? Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast, is not thy husband, in that sayest thou truly. The woman saith, saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Listen carefully. Our fathers, our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hmm. You know, this is Christ offering salvation to the people that they call the Gentiles. But yet, this Samaritan woman was a child of Jacob Israel. But yet, she's not a Jew. The churches hide this stuff from people. Is it important? I think it is. If you want to really understand the Bible, if you just want to you know, John 3, 16, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You know, uh, I'm sorry, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you, John 3, 16, if, you know, that's enough for salvation. But if you really want to understand what the Bible, the means and the deep things, Hmm. Verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Words of Christ in red. Verse 25, the woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. 
when he has come, he will tell us, when he has come, he will tell us all things. Jesus, Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Huh. Jesus is telling this Samaritan Gentile woman who is of the tribe of, you know, she's, she's an Israelite for sure. Jacob is her father. And yet he tells her, I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah is cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Wow. And then guess what? She goes into town and proclaims the truth of the gospel to him. Verse 27, And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? Yet why are you talking to that dog? The woman, verse 28, The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and saith to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. So, you know, this is the thing. This woman is a daughter of Jacob Israel. All right, let's keep reading. Verse 31. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? They never get it, do they? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. He's talking about the harvesting of souls, people. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. You see, other people sowed the seed, and yet the disciples reaped the harvest. But they're both laborers. They're both working for the same master, I guess you could say. Verse 39, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. Isn't that funny? A lot of the Jews who knew the Bible inside and out didn't believe the words of Jesus. But these, un, but these Samaritans, who the Jews considered dogs... Yet they were Israelites of Jacob Israel. They believed. Oh, let's see. Verse 41, And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Wow.
Now, after two days, he departed thence and went into Galilee. Now, that's where Jesus left, right? He was called Jesus of Galilee. Verse 44, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet, that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. But when he was coming into Galilee, the Galileans, Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. So, wow. So evidently, this woman was of Jacob Israel. She was an Israelite, but yet the Jews had no dealings with her. Why? Well, let's take a look why. Turn your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah. Okay, we're going to go to Jeremiah. And then we're going to go to chapter Jeremiah chapter 3. And let's go to verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 6. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king. Josiah was a good, God-fearing king. He was one of the last good kings. I'm not sure if he was the last good king, but he was a good king. God loved Josiah, and Josiah loved the Lord. And let me tell you something. Josiah got rid of the Sodomites, and he got rid of the witches, and God blessed him. Think about that. The Lord said unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me, but she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Oh, wait a minute. How is it that Israel played the harlot, and then it says her treacherous sister, Judah, saw it? So Israel and Judah are sisters. Well, if they're sisters, they can't be the same thing, can they? No, they're not. And your demonominational preacher doesn't want you to know that Israel and Judah are two distinct, separate nations and peoples. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me, but she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when, for all the causes, whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Israel committed spiritual adultery. God put her away and gave her a bill of divorce. God divorced Israel. But didn't God say he gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob an everlasting covenant? Yeah, he did. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Israel was divorced of God, yet Judah was not. But Judah played the harlot also. Well, guess what? 
Israel and Judah split. They separated from each other. The capital of Judah was called Jerusalem. Do you know what the Israel was called? Samaria. Israel was called Samaria. The Samaritans, maybe not all of them, I mean, you know, because people move, okay? You get people from New York and they move to Florida. Are they New Yorkers or are they Floridians? I mean, you know, they grew up in New York and then they retire in Florida. Are they New Yorkers or are they Floridians? Or are they both? I don't know. The Samaritans were, some, many of the Samaritans were Israelites. The woman at the well even said, our father Jacob, who was Israel. God divorced Israel, but he didn't divorce Judah. Verse 9, And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly, saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Wow. Now, you know, you could keep reading this chapter. Matter of fact, let's skip down a little bit. Let's skip to verse uh, Jeremiah 3 and verse 17. At the time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of God. And all the nations, what nations? The nations of Israel, right? And all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. They're not the same. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. Huh. Let's take a look at that. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an ever for an inheritance unto your fathers. Hmm. What land did they give Abraham and his children to their fathers? God gave them the land of Israel. But it says in verse 18, In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north. What land is north of Israel? Um, Europe, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Huh. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. Interesting. Out of the land of the north. Interesting. Now, think about this. If God divorced Israel, what is the marriage, you know, well, who's Christ going to marry? Think about that.
uh, let's now, now wait a minute. God divorced Israel, right? God divorced Israel, but not Judah. So let's go to Revelation chapter 21. Verse 9, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the la seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Okay. I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God having the glory of God, and her light was like uh, unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Now wait a minute. God divorced Israel. Didn't he? Yes, he did. In Jeremiah 3, 8, God divorced Israel. But here, it says in verse 9, Revelation 21, 9, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And then on verse 4, uh, let's see, verse 12, And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, twelve gates, Twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Hmm. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And in them the names of the twelve apostles of the lambs. The twelve apostles of the Lamb. And I'll guarantee you it's not Judas Iscariot. Huh. So there were twelve gates. Wow. And the bride is who? Israel. Well, you know what? I'm going to make this a part one or an introduction. If you're interested in more, what I will do is I'm going to go back into history where Israel and Judah were one kingdom. What were the events that led up to the split and how and how and why God divorced Israel, northern Israel? You see, Israel was north of Judah, and yet it said that Israel was out of the land of the north. And then what I will do is I will show you why God divorced Israel, but not Judah. The reason God didn't divorce Judah was because of the covenant, the promise that God had made with David the king. That's why he didn't divorce Judah. Even though Judah was just as bad, maybe sometimes worse, than Israel. Didn't we read that in Jeremiah that that Israel hath justified herself even more than her treacherous sister Judah? That was in Jeremiah chapter 3. Yeah. But God keeps his promises. Even though we don't, God is faithful and just. But um, the Samaritan woman was considered a Gentile. And yet Jacob Israel was her father. She was an Israelite. But the Jews considered the northern Israelites that God divorced, they considered them dogs. 
Um, in case you don't know it, one of the kings of northern Israel was a king by the name of Ahab. And he had a wife named Jezebel. Perhaps you've heard of them. All right. Israel and Judah had different people, different land areas, different kings, different capitals. Judah's capital was Jerusalem, and Samaria was the capital of northern Israel. In 1 Kings 16 and verse 33, Ahab, and Ahab made a grove, Satan worship. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. At this time, Ahab was number one on God's list, I guess you could say, of wicked people. He did more things to make God angry than all the kings before him. That's, that's, yeah. And you wonder, and I tell you what, when you've got wicked people, you're going to have a wicked ruler. And you better believe that if God's angry at the people, he's going to be angry at the rulers too. And vice versa. Because you know what? A nation of righteous people are not going to tolerate wickedness. So that's one of the reasons why God divorced Israel. And yet Judah was just as bad. All right, so we're going to do a part two. And we're going to go into the background details of why God divorced Israel. And of course, she's going to be remarried. That's what the marriage supper of the Lamb is going to be. So, all right, well, this is uh, Chaplain Bob Walker. I already read John 8, 12. This is our opening verse. So, I will just say that all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.